Uh, uh, yeah, it's time to do our clap. Uh, 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 uh. Everybody, welcome to the premiere, the very first, the maiden voyage of the Drew's News podcast. We'll be giving you all the fun, quirky, inspiring, and yes, informative stories that exist out in the world because, well, we all need it right now. And today we're covering everything from a new dog breaking up a Hollywood couple to the male nipple having a moment. And boy, do I know how to kick things off right. If there was a dream, it's being realized right now. Not only am I getting to hang out with someone I've known since I was around eight or nine years old, but someone that if I said I admire him, it would be the understatement of my life. He has been a friend. He has been someone that I highly respect, both as a human being and a professional. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe I'm actually getting to launch this podcast with none other than Rob Lowe. Drew, Drew. I'm so, I, I am so honored to be your first guest. I can't tell you. Like, if we're going to launch, let's launch with you. You know uh, what I mean? Let's do this right. It's very important. That first guest, I remember on this podcast, it was a big deal. That first guest, man, you got to... You got to throw down. I just hope I'm up to the task. You are. And the fact that I have known you my whole life, when I launched the show here, people did. They got really big on that. Who's the first guest? Mm -hmm. oh, like yes. it's some yes. bizarre measuring contest yeah, yeah. Yep. or like a stamp of what's to come. I That's don't know. Right. There's so much emphasis on it. Yes. So I called up my two girlfriends, Cameron Diaz and Lucy Liu and said, would you do the first show with me? You are people I've been through everything with. You're my dearest friends. And yes, we also happen to do a professional endeavor that we're all very proud of and anchors us, but it's everything great we've movie. been through. Great movie, great movie, great movie, great movie, great movie, great movie, great movie. Thank you for saying that, Rob Lowe, Amazing. who's been Amazing. in many a great <laughs> movies. Okay, well, what is fun about this podcast is we have a little bit of a spine, which is news. It's mm, pop culture. Yes. It's informative. It's news you can use. So mm -hmm. are you ready to dive in? I'm in. I'm in. This is I, I love this. I, 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 I love, love, love doing a podcast that is that is more timely. Mine's, mine are meant to like you can sit on the cat. The, they can sit in the in your thing and you can listen to them years from now. But I've always wanted to do one that was time sensitive. And now I'm on one. Well, in your podcast that I was fortunate enough to just do, you helped me realize that we actually live in a more gentle society when it comes to divorce mm. and how to cope and how to not judge it and how to move forward with togetherness and that that's more acceptable and more supported and more enabled now than it was back in the day. And I am feeling really optimistic about life. I'm happy to have helped in any small way. You really did. Um, okay. So first story up, male nipple. The male nipple is trending. Rob, it is all the rage in fashion right now. It's on display. Designers are creating looks with nip slips, if you will, on purpose. And I may say, you did have yours out and about uh, recently with your two sons. It's everywhere. It's viral. It's trending. By the way, if anybody needs a visual on this, go to our IG at the show.com to clock what we're talking about. <laughs> so I think the, the photo you're referring to is my boys and I on the back of a boat uh, vacationing last week. And um, talk about timely, right? I was like, you know, free the nipple. Uh, that's the thing I say. You know, I, I bring my nipples on vacation with me. I do. I bring them. They're not staying at home. And it's, and sometimes, and listen, by the way, it's the south of France where, where we were. Oh, nothing. But, you know, that's where you let, that's, isn't that the land of being topless? I mean, why, you know, equal for everybody. Let's go. I don't know because I went to Italy with my two daughters and got paparazzi in my bathing suit. And I've never felt more vulnerable. I looked like a sheep that had just been wooled in five degree weather. <laughs> I mean, it, when I found out that there was pictures on the Daily Mail of me in a bathing suit with my cottage cheese and my two kids, I, I literally think organs fell out of my body. I was like, 
<laughs> did they catch me eating too, like mid bite, looking like I was deep throating a burger? Like at the same time was I picking my nose like what else can we just show like I felt so vulnerable but it's funny because you know there's plenty of women out there who feel like free the nipple what's the difference between free the nipple for a man and free the nipple for a woman Rob you got me um I mean, you you really, really got me. I'm I want to see what the new looks that designers are making for guys I'm very excited about it There are shirts literally cut out to feature the nipple. This is so wait, so it's a shirt. Okay, wait, I'm just trying to figure out. So it's a I'm wearing it's like is if this t-shirt I'm wearing now had a nipple hole, or is it like a white, like a like one of those Italian undergarment things where you know you can kind of what what are we talking about? I I want to know. It looks like a lightning bolt. Like a lightning bolt has been cut out of the shirt to drape and hang so that your nipple is out. And it's purposeful. But listen, this is all feeling very Harry Styles to me, right? Which is, by the way, a great thing because that guy's a stud and I love him. But it, it, I think, do you think, I don't know. I'm at an age where I don't think I can pull it off. My, my sons can for sure. Well, I'm looking and I disagree. <laughs> okay. Next story. Um, it's about staying grounded in the world of Hollywood, which mm-hmm. is so much of what we talked about on your podcast. Do we know how hard that is, Rob? I think we do. Stranger mm-hmm. Things actor Noah Schnapp worked as a lifeguard this summer before going to college, quote, to stay grounded. He was thrust into the world view at 11 years old when Stranger Things became a worldwide phenomenon. Rob, thoughts? been there i mean listen i i think you take the cake on this one eight years old et doesn't get any bigger than that um by the way you're so good in that movie thank you that movie is it's just it's just i mean look i think every et should be the new wizard of oz it should be on tv (sighs) every year at christmas or whatever and we should all have like remember like that's what we did we all watched the wizard of oz it should be et and you're spectacular in it spectacular Thank you for saying that. I mean, on your podcast, we talked about the fact that when I came onto the scene, so to speak, when Mm -hmm. I walked out of the house and the world became Technicolor, Mm -hmm. all the Wizard of Oz metaphor, I was seven. It was 1982. Mm -hmm. And I was a kid, so I didn't have like girls screaming for me. There was no sort of sexualized right. aspect. Right. However, right. then my right, mom right, right, took right. me to all the clubs. I was around adults. I was definitely engaging in, you know, in the early 80s. It was heavy hedonism. We were coming out of the late 70s. There was sex, drugs, and rock and roll everywhere. So I was too aware of like sexualized things, but I wasn't a sexualized person. You right. were literally a heartthrob. That's one word we haven't covered today. We've done hunk. We've done stud. Mm-hmm. Um, you were the ultimate heartthrob. And that's an element in it that I just I I, I just still don't know how you manage it's a, to it's a weird thing. stay a normal level headed person. Look, it, it doesn't happen to everybody. And it's like a weird it's like being in Jimmy Kimmel's handsome men's club. Like, like my theory is every five years, maybe it's 10, probably more now because everything's sped up. In the old days, it was every 10 years, every decade. Every five years, there's a new it guy. You know, they all, and, it, and it, everybody has, who's the it guy has the same experience. It's, it's that madness that you're describing. And, and you know, what, what I've come to learn about it is it has very little to do with, 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 with you, And so you shouldn't take any of it personally, good or bad. It's just you happen to be the guy who's the it guy at this moment. And in 10 years, there'll be somebody else. I wish that perspective on every it guy who ever lived or is to come. In fact, who would you say is the it guy now, Rob? Well, for sure, I know who it is. And and it's, it's, it's somebody who's had it. It went away and now it's it's he's he's back at it again and it's Harry Styles. I feel like Harry's the it guy. He, he's a little older. I obviously it was the Biebs for Justin Bieber for for a long time. 
but my sons who are much more plugged in would tell me would probably tell me that there's somebody even younger and and more on the forefront but but from where i sit it feels a lot like it's 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 harry now harry styles and you also have that similar like boyish that yummy that like pretty as well as sexy and handsome you know how like that's sexy or cute or funny and sexy like there's like that four quadrants and you're two of each like yes, you guys yes, are yes, yes. everything like, do you, when you see Harry Styles having lived the life you did, are you like, have the most fun with this? Like, what 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 crosses your mind? Oh, well, it, it makes me wish I, I had been a rock star. If you go back and Google Rob Lowe in the 80s, you'll see that I was dressing like one. Oh, total saxophone player in oh, St. Elmo's yeah, Fire? Oh, yeah, from St. When, it's funny, when I first met my wife, Cheryl, one of the first things she did was went into my closet and, and threw out all of those clothes and made me start dressing like a man. And, and and I'll never forget her line. I didn't even know what this meant at the time. She goes, no man should ever wear an Eisenhower jacket. What is an and Eisenhower I, jacket? It's a cut, it's a specific, it's a cut of a jacket where it's like cut super, super high. And it made me laugh that she, that, that I was wearing like, apparently Eisenhower jackets, but I thought it, it was like, I wanted to be like, you know, Roger, uh, John Roger Taylor, Taylor. From, John Taylor from Duran Duran. But there was a Roger Taylor too. He was the drummer. And he's he's a friend of mine from Queen, Roger Taylor, good friend. No of mine. relation, John Taylor. There was John, yeah. Andy, Simon. I was obsessed because it's true. Like I, I don't think that I've ever really looked at like manly men and been like, mm. I always liked a boy who had like a wink and a smile. There was yes. something not so aggressively like masculine, and yet yes. you're all man, like. I, there's nothing not masculine about you. Again, refer to the picture of you and your sons. You are three beautiful, <laughs> handsome men. But it, it's just, it's so interesting. Okay, Harry Styles, I, I agree with that. And By the well, way, before, before we move on from my boys, um, so the, the John Owen, who's pictured there, um, it wrote a, a show for Netflix. It got picked up. Guess who his co-creator, along with me, his co-creator, for the show, Victor Fresco. <gasps> Who I was fortunate en enough to do a show called Santa Clarita Diet with. And the, it, the, the show is really all him. Like if you if you like it, it's mm -hmm, all his right. fault. If you don't like it, <laughs> yes. a lot of it is his fault. Like right, right. he that was, oh, Victor Fresco. And, you know, he used to write on Max Headroom. No way. I didn't know that. And um, or, or or like Alf, I think he definitely wrote on Alf. Oh yeah, he's 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 super talented, but he loves you. We talk about you all the Ugh. time, but I wanted to make sure you knew that, so you watch when it comes out on Netflix and don't know when, probably April. Well, you must be so proud. Yeah, it's fun to work with your son. Super. Oh my fun. God, it's like all we want is for our kids to end up okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we have to cut to a quick commercial, and we'll be right back after this break to serve you more news, including a story about a pet that caused a Hollywood breakup. Oh, you are not gonna wanna miss this. Boy. Hi, we're back. Okay, our next story, an inventive teacher took action against students using smartphones to cheat by sneaking away to the bathroom during exams. The teacher exposed 14 cheating students. They put an impossible question on the exam and secretly posted the answer on a bogus website. So the correct answer could only be answered with a Google search. And bam, the 14 students who got it correct were caught red handed. Ugh. Uh, Rob thoughts. Uh, I was such a little nerd in school, Drew. I I was scared to ditch class. I was I was such a Midwestern teacher's pet. F sat in the front row, hand up for every question. I would have been so scared to cheat. I, I was I would I, I would I just can't imagine. But I get it. I totally get it. Were, was there a point where, because I did not know that about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sad but true. Or good but true, depending on your No, good but view. true. Very sweet. Was there a point where that changed and like you got more in touch with your naughty side? Oh, yeah. I mean, all in, just g g give me some fame and alcohol in the 1980s and I'll, <laughs> I'll take care of all the naughtiness you want. But um, uh I think that actually in, in all seriousness is part of it is I, I was such a quote unquote good boy that 
you know, and you know, the thing is, is we, if we can't not to get too serious, but if we can't integrate our ids into, into our lives, you're, you're asking, it's going to come out, it's coming out and it may come out in a way you don't like. So we have to integrate our shadow sides into our light sides. And, and, you know, I, I, granted I was young, so you don't really do that, but, um, it's super important to be aware that we all have that in us. I was always so hedonistic, you know, and now, by the way, it might be Freud's triangle that like <laughs> keeps us aligned because I know to stay out of the ego. The super mm-hmm. ego is fun and right. I have a heavy id. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and by the I, way, you you just saying I have a heavy id. There's something about that I really liked. FYI. Thank you. Well, I, I mean, we bo- like when you have access to everything, drugs, partying, backstore passes, you know, backstage, like mm-hmm. just all access pass everywhere you go to everything yeah. and you're young. How is that not going to like have to have you figure some things out at some point? Like, did any one of us? I mean, we made it out alive and we thrived. Yes. But like, did anyone get a clear pass and was like, nope, oh, totally came out perfect. Yeah, nobody. No one does. And and I think it's. You know, th- those of us in in every walk of life, whether forget show business, anybody, anybody, anywhere, you know, if you're if you're not able to grow and learn and adjust and 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 look at yourself and look at yourself honestly and look at your failings honestly, then you're not going to change and you're not going to grow and then you will be stuck and then you will be effed. I agree, and I definitely have like two like cataclysmic moments where I realized I needed to change. One was when my mom threw me in that institution. And another was after I got divorced, I was so broken that I just didn't know how to pick myself up again. I wanted to be there for my kids, but I was not there for myself. And I was a shell of a human being. And those were my two biggest turning points. And it's funny what the turning points can be. They can be what you've described are are big ones. And you know, for other people, they can be small ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, mine was I mean, my mom calling me in the days when they had answering machines Ugh. and and leaving a, a message saying that my favorite grandfather had, was in the hospital, had a heart attack, and she needed me to pick up the phone. And I couldn't because I'd been partying too hard and I didn't want to talk to her. And I had that moment of this is unsustainable. This isn't who I want to be. This isn't who I am. And that was the last time I ever had a drink or a drug it was 32 years ago. But it's good. It's di- everybody has a different alarm clock is what I'm saying. And yet um, I also don't regret anything. No, for sure. No. Best Same. time ever. 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 Hello. Love my life. People are like, oh, that. And I'm like, no, not at all. No. That was oh, the best. Yes. <laughs> People are like, do you regret? Do you regret? I, here's the thing. It's really, I don't regret anything. Even not the stuff, one thing. Even the stuff that blew up in my face. Because if if I don't do that, maybe I'm not where I am today. And I And I really like where I am today. Everything that blew up in my face is spot on to my trajectory of yes. all my happiness. Total. One billion percent. And I had one hell of a good time. You. And how about the memories and the stories? I'm, <sighs> they're my most prized, other than my my family, literally other than my family, my most prized possessions are my memories and stories. Like I said, being at your, was it your 20th birthday party at the yes. Lhasa Club? The Lhasa Club. God bless you for remembering. I'll never forget club. getting in there, having the best time. It was one of the best nights of my life. And you had invited me. And it just seems like weirdly yesterday. It's extremely vivid. All right. Moving on. Listen, divorce is no laughing matter, as we've much established, mm-hmm. and can really be tough on a family. And there are so many things that can be at the root cause. But this particular reason that this couple is saying uh, is new for me. Sylvester Stallone's wife, um, model Jennifer Flavin, reportedly filed for divorce after the couple disengaged over whether or not to get 
a new dog. Sly did say this wasn't the only reason, but they did disagree over the best way to care for Dwight, the new dog. The Rocky actor also recently tattooed a tribute to his late dog, Buckkiss, on his bicep, covering a previous tattoo of his wife, Jennifer Flavin's face. So to me, that sounds like why there's a divorce. I mean, the the dog over the tattoo and That's the dog being, yeah, it, the, you know. Yeah, well, I never thought the tattoo of Jennifer was particularly good anyway. So I put a dog on it. You know, just put it in, you do it. I think a lot of people like dogs. I do. I am dying. That is going to live rent free in my head <laughs> on a broken record. And I'm going to be the happiest person ever. Also, fun fact, I do send almost one Rocky Giffy every single day of my life. Oh, the best. It's either him doing the one handed, uh, you know, uh, God, I'm so bad at working out terms. Um, push ups, the one handed push ups or the like roaring so with the crowd the, or like ducking through the meat. You know, in the 80s, in the 80s, uh, there was a Santa Mo there was a gym in Santa Monica that everybody worked out at. And I was working out there and Sly was there training for Rambo. Now, I don't look, he was always gr shredded in all these, but Rambo too was next level. I and love I Rambo. I used to watch him work out and I would say, what's the secret? What, what should I do? He goes, listen, you got to be working on your, your show muscles. I mean, you want to, your forearms because you just roll your shirt down like that and everybody sees your forearms and they think, wow, everything's really big, you know, just have the forearms. <laughs> And, uh, you know, that, and then, you know, your abs, you do have to do those. But uh, really, that's all it is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> much to Sly's point, at this point, I'm showing a quarter inch of decolletage and forearm. <laughs> so right. I have to agree. Yeah, all right, yeah. our last story, and it's a sweet one. You could get paid to eat candy as a Canadian company's chief candy officer. The position pays 100000 Canadian dollars, that's $78,000 American, mm. annually. Besides eating about 113 pieces of candy a day, the chief candy officer will lead the company's funhouse candy strategy, run candy board meetings, and have a say in which product candy funhouses will carry. Rob, would this be a job that is in your dreams or your nightmares? Well, I just want to know what they do every day when he has the sugar crash. <laughs> I mean, that that because like I'm sure that whoever has this job is going to be great at it for about what twelve minutes after he eats the candy, and then it's a nap. And yeah, it, for me, I mean, it would I've... be what's the candy? There are certain candies I could eat all day and all day and all night, but other candies I I couldn't do. Do you think that children, because I know when my kids eat a lot of candy, how psychotic they act afterwards, like you say, the crash. Do you think adults have that same crash or do we grow bigger and like it's different? I, I don't know the answer. We, I can tell you we do. But here's what I want to ask you. As a, I remember there's that age where we're all super concerned about our kids' sugar levels and it kind of, that kind of goes away. Well, it goes away when we con become concerned about their alcohol levels. But <laughs> I the know. My, oh, I, 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 yeah, for sure. I'm like, my kids have Barrymore's in their genes. I'm terrified. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's like the, having the Irish gene. So, yeah, they're but, Irish and Barrymore's. Oh I'm boy, double, double downing whammy. on hell. But remember, but the, so when you're worried about your kids having too much desserts and too much sugar, I always knew there was trouble when a kid would come over and say, my parents don't let me have sugar. I knew I would find that kid huffing <laughs> sugar. I, you, I just knew it. I knew, beware the kid who tells you the parents, quote, what, don't let him have sugar. Keep your eye on that kid. By the way, you're so right. You're so right. Because my mom wouldn't let me eat sugar. Studio 54 yeah, yeah, and yeah. like... <laughs> But no sugar. You know, weed yes. and alcohol, totally fine. But don't touch that sugar. That makes perfect sense. And I did. I snuck chocolate <laughs> in the closet. Yes, under the bed, for sure. <laughs> All the other habits were out in the open. But yes. the sugar was an in the closet thing. Oh, yeah. I guess Literally, it. I would hide it in a box in my closet and just... <laughs> <laughs> and then make my Barbies dry hump. <laughs> So good. So if you good. did have to eat 113 pieces of candy a day, what candy would you pick as your poison? Mm. Um, it would be, it might be, oh, I was going to say Reese's Pieces in honor of you and E.T. Oh, 
but my I'm god, but say, you were about to say buttercups? I was I would no, it was it was it it's Reese's the, the old school Reese's, not the Reese's pieces, the old school ones, the little cups. That, yeah, that was mine too. Really? Yes, I pre said Reese's it. I have witnesses right here. The best. We we love Freud's triangle. I know. And Reese's buttercups. We sure do. We grew up in this industry and in this beautiful job of ours that we're still lucky enough to have maintained. We've lived lives that we embrace everything we've done. And somehow we've become family first people with allergies to the fabulous lane of life, wanting our truest, nearest and dearest Not because we are movers and shakers, but because they are the people that bring out our best in us, probably kick our butts when we're not being our best, and who we feel most at home with. That, to me, is family. Totally. I have loved you for literally what will be, in a few months, 40 years as a friend and someone I know. I loved you long before we met. That's how we met is because you were my favorite and my hero. And then we got brought together because all I ever talked about was you. That is amazing. But that doesn't mean if you love somebody that they're ever going to like show up in your life. And you did. When I had the chicken pox and you became my friend and invited me to your birthday party and the rest is history. (laughs) I love you. I love your family your beautiful wife, Cheryl, and your gorgeous sons. I just wish you the best. And I can't thank you enough for kicking this endeavor off with me. Um, well, I thank you. This is an honor. This is a great, I, your show is fantastic. You're going into year three. You're killing it. And now this podcast, Drew's News. I'm here I am. I, I'm, I'm the headline of Drew's News. And that made my day and week and year. By the way, and ready? I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm, love you. If you enjoyed this episode of Drew's News Podcast, you can hear all new episodes every Friday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.